Energy companies are posting record profits as they continue to increase the prices that you pay for electricity, gas, home heat and oil and transport fuel. They say that the increases are needed to properly reflect the cost of the supply on the international market. Yet, with the continued increases of the cost to you, their bank accounts continue to swell. Something doesn't add up. BP Oil, one of Ireland's biggest suppliers, doubled its profits to $6.2 billion this year. The pay of BP's boss, Ireland's Bernard Looney, ballooned to nearly £4.5 million in 2021, after soaring energy prices transformed the company into a cash machine. County Tyrone fuel giant LCC almost doubled its profits last year, up to 87.5% in 2020, and still increased its prices. The almost billion pound enterprise runs the local GO service stations and imports coal through Belfast Harbour. SSC Electricity, a major supplier across all of Ireland, posted pre-tax profits of £3.5 billion this year, up 44%. The company came under fire in recent years for an alleged lack of compassion and disconnecting customers. Vermilion Energy's revenues from Ireland's Corrib gas feed last year rose by 267%. These figures are only a small fraction of the profits of all energy companies in Ireland. If we are only paying for the increased cost of fuel on the international market, then why are the profits of these major businesses swelling to unseen amounts? The 26 counties hold 0.35 trillion cubic feet of proven gas reserves as of 2017. That's proven reserves equivalent to almost twice annual consumption. The undeveloped Bally Row oil field is estimated to contain up to 1.6 billion barrels. Bally Row is owned by two private companies who hope to raise significant profit on your oil by selling it back to you. Instead of governments adequately taxing the profits of these big companies, they apply a huge tax per litre on you for buying it. So not only are you buying your oil and gas from a private company who profits from it, but you're paying a sizable tax to do so. Given that governments across Ireland have consistently passed laws favouring the profits of big businesses and the super rich, you could be forgiven for thinking that politicians were firmly in their pockets. Indeed, business and politics here are structured in such a way that they can do whatever they like without any consequences. Little wonder then that in the last decade, a European Commission report found that 86% of those surveyed believed that corruption was endemic in Ireland. Across both the six and 26 county states, governments are firmly wedded to the economics of neoliberalism, consistently privatising public companies and the public workforce, favouring zero-hour contracts and driving down wages in real terms. Ireland is truly open for business, and you're paying for it. The housing executive in the six counties recently estimated that half of all homes in the state are currently living in fuel poverty. This means that they cannot afford to heat their homes and have to decide between heating or eating. In the 26 counties, record numbers of households are experiencing fuel poverty. A recent report from the Economic and Social Research Institute found that it was affecting an estimated 29% of households compared to a previous high of 23% in 1995. It has suggested that it could be an average raise in energy costs of €37 Euro per week by the winter, nearly 2000 extra a year for these big energy companies. Increase in poverty in working class areas globally is linked to increased deaths and ill health. The people of Ireland are literally paying for the cost of living crisis with their lives. If you're wondering what can be done about it, there's plenty. Countries like Bolivia have introduced direct taxes on hydrocarbons in 2005, significantly increasing income for the public purse. The following year, they nationalized the oil and gas sector, pushing the country's revenue even higher. Billions can now be utilized for public spending, investment, and expansion of local utilities. This money would otherwise have been smuggled offshore into tax havens in the pockets of the super rich, CEOs, and boardrooms, just like here in Ireland. Instead, it is distributed across the economy, and the local government utilizes the income for public use, infrastructure, investment, education, housing, and more. Across both failed states in Ireland, there are 1.1 million people living in poverty. It is so sad to think that 312,000 of them are children. Across Ireland, there are 103,218 households waiting on a home. You might wonder why this is when there are 188,000 homes sitting empty. In the 26 counties, 29% are living in fuel poverty. In the six counties, it is estimated that a massive 50% suffer the same fate. And this is predicted to rise to over 70% in 2023. 
Lassoyard believes that all natural resources should be brought under the control of a 32 county socialist republic in order that those resources be utilised for the common good. The wealth created from those resources should be invested in public services, in our health system, in housing, in education, food provision and more, targeting the complete elimination of poverty and homelessness and developing a society free from class inequality. Both governments in Ireland have, for generations now, failed to fix the burning issues facing our people, and it's only getting worse. Rather than deal with the core issue of capitalism and profiteering, they call it a cost of living crisis. Remember austerity, and before that it was the recession, now it's the cost of living crisis. Beyond are no illusions that this is a war between the working class and the super rich, a war between us and them and they're winning. The question is, haven't you had enough yet?